Did you know that when you feel an emotion such as shame, there may not be any reason for you to feel this way? I'm Johanna, and I'm talking about the kind of shame that is unwarranted and brought on without any real cause. I'll discuss how you can heal from this kind of shame. I'm also going to talk about how you may have developed this sensitivity to shame feelings, the three different types of shame with my own personal examples. Finally, I'll give you some steps that you can take to eliminate these feelings on your own without having to write about them, talk to someone about them, or use positive thinking. You may be asking yourself, what is shame? Is it the same as feeling guilt? These are two different emotions. I want you to think about a time when you deliberately did something wrong in the past. Maybe you took something that wasn't yours or you didn't tell the truth. In this case, what you would feel is guilt over something you did. Shame, on the other hand, is what you feel when you feel as though there is something wrong with you, not just that you've done something wrong. Shame is the feeling that for some reason, you just don't measure up to expectations. You're not worthy of love and acceptance. It's a deeply painful feeling. So why would we ever feel something so horrible when it's uncalled for? Well, basically what we're experiencing is an emotional reaction or an old pattern that's been wired into the part of the brain called the limbic system. It's built for survival to protect us from injury and pain. So it's constantly trying to determine the level of threat in our environment at any given time. This is where most of our behavioral and emotional reactions are held. These patterns are there for efficiency, so we don't have to think when there's a perceived danger. So we end up reacting to this and that situation like a machine. And in the case of feeling shame without a cause, it's, it's as though our machines have been calibrated incorrectly to be overly sensitive. And nothing has been done to correct this. Unless we can observe ourselves, we aren't even aware of these reactions until after they occur and much of the time, we live our lives on autopilot. The subconscious mind is a powerful influencer of our judgments, decisions, and reasons for behavior. If this doesn't seem right, just ask yourself, how many judgments and decisions have you made recently through a conscious effort? Have you ever tried tandem skydiving? I have. And even with my strongest conscious intention, it was extremely difficult for me to let go of the plane. My behavior did not easily follow my conscious instruction. Use your attention to try to observe your thoughts, emotions, and behavior for just one day to begin to understand the machine in which we all inhabit and how much of the time you were actually in auto mode, completely unaware of what you're doing. For some of us, this feeling of shame or being unworthy of love and acceptance was introduced at a very young age. We learn to feel shame in response to not meeting an expectation. Our parents, teachers, and caretakers shamed us 
into behaving the way they wanted us to. And it was an extremely effective means of control for them. There are three basic types of shame, and I'll give you examples of all three credited to my mother. The first example is related to the type of shame which attacks the attributes of a person's character. Some examples of character shaming would be when I was either told or asked how I could be so selfish, lazy, or stupid. The second example relates to a behavior that doesn't meet an expectation. For me to trigger this, it could be as simple as unknowingly having my training bra strap showing at 11 years old. Upon leaving one morning for the school bus, I was told that I looked like a slut and needed to change my shirt. The third example is body shaming. An example of this would be when my mother would tell me my legs were so skinny they looked like chicken legs. Unfortunately, comments like these are not unique among narcissistic or overly controlling parents. So how does a young child react to shaming? Well, some of us might look down our face turns red, our throat tightens, our jaw clenches, or maybe our body stiffens with pain and we cry. But we learn to take the abuse to survive. At the time, we feel unlovable and worthless, but we survive, which is what the subconscious mind is programmed for. Adults are more powerful and they get the controlled behavior they want the child to exhibit. Unfortunately, it only takes a few repetitions of any type of fearful memories to form hidden patterns of behavior deep within our subconscious mind. Each of us inhabits a highly effective survival machine. I wish that I'd understood the motivation for character shaming at a younger age, so maybe I wouldn't have taken it to heart. It isn't just to control. You see, the insight that I had much later on as an adult was that my mother's angry words were simply a reflection of what she didn't like about herself. It wasn't really about me. For instance, she saw herself as selfish, stupid, or lazy. So she punished me for being a reminder of her own perceived shortcomings. Remember that one of the motivations behind destructive criticism is because you remind the criticizer of something that they haven't been able to accept. And for them, it feels good good to aim their fury at you instead of at themselves. Later on, this kind of learned shame is felt even when there's no real cause for it. Once again, our machine is calibrated to a higher sensitivity than what is necessary for our survival. For example, imagine you're really excited about an idea at work, and when you tell your colleague, he responds to your idea by laughing. You don't understand why, but you immediately feel your face getting hot, while you have this sinking feeling of worthlessness, followed by negative thoughts that only bring you down further. Then your colleague innocently explains the reason for his laughter, which has nothing to do with you or your idea his mind had just wandered on to something else entirely. So what do you do when something triggers a shame response like this? Well, when you recognize this emotion coming on, take a deep breath. 
breathing out slower than you breathe in to calm down your limbic system. Sense how your body feels and then place your attention on your heart. Imagine the air going in and coming out of your heart. Without judgment, become curious about how the emotion feels. Try not to judge it at all. And don't use positive thinking to fight it as that requires judging the emotion as negative. The feeling of shame is just energy like any other emotion. Imagine that there is a limited amount of this shame energy left in you. And in experiencing it, without reacting with judgment, you deplete it more and more. You can watch how it has less and less energy. Over time, without adding to its energy, it will eventually dissipate into nothingness. You can watch it getting smaller. Think of this as a way of communicating to your limbic system that it needs to recalibrate and lower its threat warning system. You are safe and don't need to feel unnecessary shame anymore. The more you can practice this technique when you feel any emotional reaction coming on, the more you can undo unnecessary patterns that don't work for you and be conscious of how you choose to respond. I sincerely hope that this video has brought you some insights into shame and emotional reactions and that you'll try this technique I've described with any unwanted emotion you may have. If it was helpful for you, please hit the like button to give me some positive feedback or let me know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any content. And I hope to see you again very soon.